at a time which is usually filled with joy and excitement for PC gamers and indie devs alike. This year is a little different. Yes, the Steam summer sale is here, but customers are confused, developers are complaining, and Valve are apologizing. The Steam Grand Prix summer sale, as it's called, has so far been nothing but a car crash. Steam launched their summer sale on Tuesday, June 25th, which is due to last for two weeks. This year, Valve have added a twist to proceedings in the form of a meta game, and it works as follows. Every customer joins one of five teams who race against each other in an attempt to win free games. If only it was that simple. Proceedings were convoluted by a very confusing points gathering system, which actually takes a while to get your head around. I barely understand it myself but here goes to earn points for your team you need to make space for them in the boost meter before you earn them you grow the boost meter by spending money in the steam store once you have the capacity to store them in your boost meter you can then earn points by completing quests by playing games that much i understand okay here is where i lose it a little bit something to do with boosting something to do with nitro points something to do with coordinating with teammates and something to do with slowing other teams down. At the end of each day, if your team wins or gets in the top three teams, then you get free games, maybe. But only if you bought a game already, probably, I think. Winners are chosen at random from the winning teams and will be awarded their most wished for games from their wish lists. Players have interpreted this to mean that they will win a game at random from their wish list. The problem for developers, especially indie devs, is that this has led to their games being deleted en masse from hundreds, sometimes thousands of players' wish lists. Players are removing the lower priced games from their wish lists in favour of the premium ones, as they would rather win the expensive games. However, Valve have come out and clarified that customers will win the game at the top of your wish list, not at random. All players have to do is reorder their lists, not cull them to get their preferred games. But the damage has already been done for the indie devs who rely on players' wish lists for vital sales. More people deleting our games from their wish lists than purchasing them from their wish lists, which as far as I can see has never happened in a sale before, said indie dev Tom Vian on Twitter and posted the graph to prove it. Customers are taken to Reddit to complain about the complexity of the system and that they're not being allocated their points slash bonus slash boost slash nitros or whatever the hell as expected. One user said, I had 29 nitro boosts or whatever, used three of them and then I read that every one dollar I spent would be 100 extra points for my boost cash. Spent 100 $126 on games expecting to see an increase of 12,600. Nothing popped up within a few hours. Thought maybe it'll apply next day. Day two, uh, nine boost packs remaining and my points slash cash limit is now 60.99. Valve have issued an apology in a blog post. We designed something pretty complicated with a bunch of numbers and rules and recognize we should have been more clear. We want to apologize for the confusion that this has caused and also apologize for the broken mechanics that have led to an unbalanced event. This is not the ideal scenario for Valve, who are feeling the pressure of an increasingly competitive PC marketplace recently, added to the pressure mounting for them to review their 30% cut on games, which they take off every game sold on Steam. At least their apology was somewhat clear. Yeah, and at least they did you, did you understand any of that? Because you didn't read any of the article. <laughs> I, 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 Any time I see this nonsense with Steam, I, my eyes do kind of glaze over a bit because I'm like, why? Why can't they just be better? Just, they just need to make it more simple and clarify a little bit. They're like this convoluted system where you you've got to earn points and you've got a boost meter and you've got nitro, all this nonsense. It's like all these terms that people have got to learn before you even get involved in it. And it's like, and that one one guy on Steam who thought he was going to add twelve thousand capacity to his points by spending this much money. And it sounds like that's why he did it. it spent $126 at once, just for that reason, but then it didn't show up. It's it's like, it's you know, he's spending all that money to get some sort of reward. It's like, is Valve are trying to tr fool people into spending more money right now? And at the end of the day, he didn't get his reward. So it's, they've got a lot of explaining to do. And they've got to explain it better than they have done in their instructions for how to participate in the Steam Summer Sale. Maybe that's why, 
Valve don't make games anymore because they've forgotten how and they just make a convoluted mess. But now for the moment you've all been waiting for, your daily news nuggets. Sony has announced a new live action Final Fantasy XIV TV series. A company called Hive Mind Entertainment, who are behind the Netflix adaptation of The Witcher, have partnered with Square Enix on the project. It's too early for any more info such as what network it will air on, when it premieres or who the cast will be, so watch this space. Devolver Digital have announced that side-scrolling shoot 'em up with a banana on the cover game called My Friend Pedro has sold over a quarter of a million copies in its first week on sale. The indie game from Dead Toast Entertainment only launched on June the 20th and to celebrate reaching this milestone, Devolver have published a behind the scenes video to YouTube. So maybe we'll get some answers on why the banana. The highlight of E3 2019 for many players, as well as us, was the breathtaking announcement of a release date for Cyberpunk 2077. Fans can now plan for the upcoming launch on April the 16th next year a little better better, at least PlayStation players. It was confirmed on a PlayStation Store listing that fans will need to clear a minimum of 80 gigabytes of storage on their systems to store the game. The sequel to 2017's sci-fi Souls-like game The Surge is coming to systems on September the 24th this year, and for fans anticipating The Surge 2, Focus Home Interactive have just published a dev walkthrough video to YouTube showing off the gameplay. The almost 9 minute video showcases some new environments, combat movesets, weapons, enemies and a boss battle. Bandai Namco have announced a new online RPG called Blue Protocol. The game, which is coming to the PC, will use Unreal Engine 3, although no trailer has been released yet. All we have to go on so far is this screenshot, although more details are expected very soon. The highly acclaimed adventure indie game What Remains of Edith Finch is launching on the Switch very soon. Many people's pick for Game of the Year back in 2017 will be available on Nintendo's portable device from July the 4th. A listing on the Nintendo Nintendo eShop in Japan details a 2.2 gigabytes install size and a price point of 2,200 yen, which converts to around 20 US dollars or 16 GBP. The PS Plus games for July have just been announced. The free games this month are Pro Evolution Soccer 2019 and Horizon Chase Zero. This is not the first time in recent months that the free games have been met with disappointment from subscribers. Kotaku's Jason Schreier has been at it again. This time he's blown the lid off of the working conditions over at Treyarch, the developers behind the Call of Duty Black Ops franchise. The article titled The Human Cost of Call of Duty is, in true Shire fashion, really bloody long and goes into detail about how Treyarch treats its employees and QA testers. Very long story short, not very well. A new trailer for Apex Legends Season 2 has just dropped and it shows off some of the much needed changes to the game. We see that the map has been significantly changed with some areas being destroyed, new bases being set up and those huge aliens are walking through the map. We also get a look at a new legend, Watson, who has a bunch of electricity-based abilities as well as some new weapons and character skins. There you have it, your gaming news nuggets for today. Links to everything that we've just mentioned are down in the description of this video if you want to go and check them out. And let's do a joke. And the jokes come in on the Pretty Good Gaming Discord channel, which you can get access to from as little as $1 per month over on patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming and today's joke comes in from Mr. Metal Shark himself and he says my drug test came back negative my dealer sure has some explaining to do <laughs> lol that, that's rubbish it's a dad joke isn't it I mean I, I guess you can't really say that to your kids because it's bad joke. never mind it was it was fine <laughs> <laughs> For better or worse, Google Stadia will surely shake up the industry when it launches this November. It was previously revealed that the streaming subscription service will cost about $10 and will grant you access to additional game discounts and offers, and there will also be a free version coming in 2020. But unlike with other streaming services like Netflix, where you pay for the subscription and that's it, with Stadia you will still have to pay for the games on top. But not only that, they actually won't be any cheaper than the conventional PC or console versions. Speaking at a press event yesterday, Stadia Chief Phil Harrison said, I don't know why it would be cheaper. The value you get from the game on Stadia means you can play it on any screen in your life. TV, PC, laptop, tablet, phone. I think that is going to be valuable to players. Now that's despite the fact that you'll be streaming rather than running it on your local system, meaning that issues like connectivity and latency will always be a factor. It seems that Harrison and the rest of the Stadia team are very confident in how powerful their setup is, saying, in theory, the Stadia version of a game is going to be at the highest possible quality of innovation and sophistication on the game engine side. This means that the subscription is really just access to the hardware rather than the actual game content. But then that begs the question, why not just buy 
buy a gaming PC if you're still paying full price for your games. Harrison claims Stadia is about consumer choice. So we wanted to give gamers a choice so they could engage in the games they wanted in the way they wanted. And in all cases, without the very high upfront cost of buying a sophisticated device to put onto their TV or on their desk. Stadia will, in theory, be the affordable alternative to a high-end gaming PC, eliminating the high upfront cost of a system. Part of the issue, just like when Netflix originally launched, is that the library will be fairly limited to begin with and will take some time to become a viable alternative. Having a limited selection of games, which you still have to pay for on top of the subscription isn't exactly ideal, and Netflix is constantly adjusting their prices, so expect Stadia to do the same. In addition to the cost of the subscription and the games, users can also get the Founders Edition, which costs $129 and includes Chromecast Ultra Hardware for 4K and HDR streaming, Limited Edition Night Blue Controller, three-month subscription to Stadia Pro, which offers 4K and HDR streaming and access to all Destiny 2 content, three-month Stadia Pro subscription for a friend known as the Buddy Pass, discounts on Stadia game purchases, first access to a Stadia username. Stadia will support PS4 and Xbox One controllers as well as mouse and keyboards, but if you want to use the service this year when it launches in November, you'll need to have the Founders Edition or you'll have to wait until 2020. Harrison believes that the industry is in transition, but according to a recent survey, gamers just don't care. According to GameTrack, 70% of people surveyed in the UK, France, Germany and Spain simply aren't interested in streaming. 15% of those surveyed said they were interested in a Netflix-like subscription and just 3% were very interested. It is important to note that this survey classed gamers as anyone playing games via any device, which includes mobile games. 43% of participants claims their internet can handle it, while 32% were worried about the internet dropping out. So this reinforces the question, who is this really even for? It's the future though. It's the future. That's they, what they, they say. They, they, they tell us it's the future. They tell us it's the future. We're telling them 70% of us are saying, we're not interested. How did they equate that? Only 30% of current gamers are interested in this one future technology i mean who who is it for indeed who is it for yeah. not me and there's the argument about whether or not it's cost effective because yes an eight dollar well eight pound ten dollar subscription is cheaper than a you know a couple hundred pound console or a, over a grand worth uh, gaming pc but if you've got a rubbish library what's the point because you can only say you've only got like five games that you're interested in you're then massively limited in what you can play. And then there's also the question of the connectivity issue. You've got a stable enough connection to run it, but not at optimal settings. Say you're at, you're at 720p, 30 FPS, and you're still paying the same price for, for the, the subscription service and full price for your game. What's the point? You no. can just, just buy the, the versions that's going to run properly. The, the thing that destroys their argument in terms of economy of it for me is they say that you will save money. You won't have to buy the, the hardware underneath your TV or whatever. You won't have to buy that. But over the course of a six-year console cycle, right, you buy a console for three four $400 or you can pay for this subscription service for $620. I mean, that doesn't equate. It does surprise me what they haven't cottoned on to is what they do with subscriptions on or contracts on mobile phones and, and why they haven't used that for gaming consoles, you know, in the last few years is, is beyond me because it, if you think you can pay $10 a month for a console on a contract for like a few years, I mean, does that work out? Yeah, two or three years, right? You'd have it paid off and you're only paying $10 a month. You'd do that. I'd, I'd do that over Google Stadia. And then at least then you own the, the hardware at the end of it. Google Stadia is just a money pit and that's what they want. They want a money pit. They want your subscription and they want you to be subscribed for your entire life. But unfortunately, um, I don't, I don't, it's just, it's just going to be too laggy. It's going to be too laggy. The connection isn't going to be there for most people. 30, only 30% 30 of current gamers are interested. It, I, 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 I fear for it. I fear for them. I don't yeah. think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to catch on. It's going to be another Google Glass and they're, they're going to ditch it. I don't 100% reject the idea of game streaming because if people want to do that, that's cool. But it's not for me. And I don't think it's going to be for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Evidently, 70% of people just don't care. That wasn't even people like, oh, we're completely against it. That was like, we, we, don't, yeah. we don't care. We've already got the system we need. I've tried streaming. I've tried recently and I tried in the past with OnLive and it's never clicked, doesn't work, it's too slow. I'm just a skeptic, I'm just an ultimate skeptic. Prove me wrong, Google, I want you to prove me wrong. I want it to be an awesome service, yeah. but it's just not doable and you're trying to sell us this vision of something that isn't doable, you're bullshitting us. It's wrong, tell us the truth.
It's shit. <laughs> Phil Harrison walks on stage. Google it's, Stadia. It's shit. <laughs> it's a bit shit. <laughs> so that's it from us for your Friday news roundup. But if you want to hear more from us later this very evening, go on over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. Sign up. You'll get access to our podcast. We'll be talking about a bunch of different stuff, including the new GOG Galaxy 2.0 beta, which Gaz has had access to. He's been looking at it and, and how you can play all your games in one place and how it's, 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 it's the bee's knees, it, it's the it's cat's nice. pajamas, it's, it it's awesome. Good. So go check that out. If you want to follow up on any of the stories we've discussed today, be sure to check down in the description below. If you like the content we've been making and want to see a bit more of it, maybe hit subscribe and the bell so you stay notified whenever we publish new stuff. Leave a like, it, apparently it helps out in the al algorithm because you know YouTube's weird. Comment below on what you think about everything we've said. I'm trying to get every possible YouTube word in there. Like and subscribe and comment and All that share stuff. with your friends. Send nudes, <laughs> copy DM, <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'm done. Wow. Told you. You spelled it wrong there too. You, you're laboring your, under the impression. Get that, your like, Jewish names right, shit. will you? Get your Jewish names right. You, you, you. What's the word for people who don't like Jews? I know. I know it. <laughs> because I'm. Because you're it. <laughs> Anti-Semite. Anti-Semite. There you go. You bloody racist.